um, this is fads versus trends. Are you a trendsetter or a trad? Trad is a real word. It's not, but we'll tell you why. What's the other one? Friend, fend, oh. fend. Fend and trads. Fends and trads. Trend. So you have paddles. They're not fans. <laughs> you also don't get to keep them. We need them for our CLA presentation. Okay. Next slide. It just oh, says who we me. are. Sorry, where's the thing? I lost it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I just want to go on record. I did not authorize the use of that photo. She found it on Facebook, and it's like a glamour shot. I don't know why you picked that one. <laughs> because also, we, just, we have like a minute introduction, so I'm just going to say, I didn't think the screen would be this big. I thought our pictures would be really tiny, and you wouldn't mock us. Uh, it's okay. Pinterest fail. Um, all right, so why are we you here? You guys know all that already. Um, Perhaps. We're going to talk about trends and fads. How many of you guys have heard of a trend? Oh my gosh. We're, we're trending. We, my maybe, maybe we need to back up. How many of you guys have heard of a fad? Or a trad? I love that they're using their paddles already. <laughs> That's one dollar, Bob Barker. So, one dollar. One thing we want to talk about is why it's important to recognize that things are trends and fads. Um, we want to show patrons and the community. I use patrons at my library. I know some libraries use customers, but I'm just going to say patrons because that's what I'm used to. Um, and we want to show them that we're relevant. We know what's going on in their lives. It builds credibility for us. Um, I'm going to use Pokemon Go as an example for pretty much everything. So if you don't like Pokemon Go, I'm really sorry. but That's a trend. It's a fad. Okay. Um, <laughs> It also shows us that we uh, embrace pop culture and we're not antiquated, um, like we talked earlier, the stereotypes about libraries and librarians. Um, if we embrace these trends and fads. See, we mixed up the words a lot, so we just made up our own words. So, trends and fads. Um, so, What's a fad, technically? <laughs> technically, okay. Rumor has it, it used to mean for a day. Fad, for a day. I have no like uh, resources or uh, can't back I can't up and back that up with anything other than it spells F-A-D. So for a day, uh, according to the dictionary, it means short-lived, crazed, intense, widely shared, enthusiasm, obsessions, mania, fetishes, and fixations. This is a family-oriented program. I don't need you throwing <laughs> those words around. You know what? Um, I get to describe trend, which has to be really boring, of course. So it's a general direction, which something boring. is changing, progressing, um, which is not like me. Uh, movement, longevity, all of that fun stuff. So we kind of have an interesting... Next slide. It was right there all the time. But just as an idea, like the whole idea of um, fens and trads was basically because there's a lot of over... <laughs> Maybe I should... <laughs> you should keep them so they don't get distracted by the shiny yeah. objects. So, um, they um, overlap. A lot of things in some ways are fads, a lot of things in some ways are trends, so we came up with, you know, fens and trads. So if you hear that word, that's either, it's probably us messing up, but we just it, decided, it is us messing up, but we decided to make them real words so that it didn't look like we were messing up. <laughs> that's a good idea in any presentation. Um, so a really great analogy that we have is VHS versus DVD versus Blu-ray. This is a really professionally done PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I need you to know that now. Nicole should have never let me make it because she has already regretted it. No, it's not. Um, okay, so VHS. How many of you guys, your library still carry VHS for checkout? Wow. That's, that's two more hands, three more hands than I thought I was going to get. Four. Look, there's a fourth over there. They're like, yes. Um, how many of you guys, raise your hand, you carry DVDs? And how many of you guys carry Blu-rays? Oh my gosh. So I think this dispels what you were going to talk about. I don't think so necessarily because how many, raise your hand if you carry DVDs and Blu-rays? Okay. See? So what we kind of want to talk about in trends and fads is that VHS was a trend for a really long time. Uh, that's the way you did it. It always remembered where it left off. It was great. You had those little tags that said, please be kind and rewind. Um, everything was around. You'd get mad at patrons who wouldn't rewind video. Anybody under 20, by the way? This is not your future. Um, <laughs> or your past. Or your past, actually. Good point. Um, and then DVDs came along, and what you saw was the medium changed, and that VHS went one way, which there's a cool slide about next. You got it. DVDs went whoop, VH went whoo. 
Um, sound effects are free. Um, but what we find is a lot of time, libraries will carry both DVD and Blu-ray players because the medium hasn't gone extinct. Like VHS, in a sense, has gone extinct. People don't carry them anymore. I can't find a VHS, except for you four who had them. Good job. Um, but VHS and Blu-ray exist in a happy medium together. I don't own a Blu-ray player, but you were telling me you do. I do own a Blu-ray player. Fancy. Um, but also that if she can't find the Blu-ray on the shelf, she just grabs the DVD. Like, she's going to watch the latest Marvel Civil War, whether it's on Blu-ray or DVD. And I think that's true of a lot of our patrons. Nobody's saying, like, I can't check out this DVD. It can only be Blu-ray. They might say it'd be great if you carry Blu-ray, but they're not mad if they have to get the DVD. Well, some of them are mad, but that's a different library issue. Um, okay, so that's fads versus trends. A big part of it is how do you decide what is a fend or fend? See? See, we did it already. A fad or a trend. Uh, money. 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 Uh, money is a really, really big stumbling block. My library, don't stone me, does not carry DVD. Or, oh. Whoa. <laughs> we only carry VHS. No, um, <laughs> we carry no Blu-rays but we carry DVD. And the initial investment cost for us to go back and back purchase our catalog is huge, so it's a stumbling block for us. So that money is, as we've learned, the root of all evil and the root of me not getting a Blu-ray collection. And then um, the other thing you wanna d think about when you're deciding if you want to kind of latch on to a trend or a fad is your community needs. Pokemon Go is so crazy at our library, and our library has two gyms and five Pokestops and whatever, I don't know. Um, and I could tell just by the way that the community is acting that it's something that's important to them, and that is a really um, good way to guide you if you want to kind of latch on to something. I kind of also look at it like, I don't know if you remember those old like workout movies from like the 80s where they had someone in the middle that, or someone that was low impact, so they would do like and then someone was like regular impact, and then someone was like crazy, like high impact. That kind of reminds me of how you can um, react to a fad or a trend. You can do low impact, things that we do at our library for something like Pokemon Go, where we just want to latch onto something at the moment, is just post something on social media that you have a gym or that you put a lore down or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm really gonna use Pokemon Go for every example. Um, my I, husband plays it, my seven year old plays it, it's around. I like the, the low impact, high impact. I almost got Cheryl up here to oh, show us. Oh, could you demonstrate, so, Cheryl? So, no. She is a I trainer. I find a really good, anyways. At 24 hour fitness. About. Yeah, she um, does work at 24 hour. She'll get you a discount, group rate. All right, what's the next slide? Let me see um, if that was my money slide. Oh, yes. Yeah, there you go, that's my life. Um, okay, so we're going to get into the interactive, fun part of this. The great part is they put us on after lunch, which means you're tired and you're full of bad choices that you maybe made at lunch. Um, you're half asleep and you were like, oh, I guess I'll come back to the conference because um, they're paying me to come here. So we are actually going to present we need help. one of three... We were Friend supposed to have ads. a panel of librarians. You can look at all these chairs. It is just us two. They all left. They saw what we were doing. <laughs> and they were like, that's a fad. I got to go. OK, so the, first, the way we're going to start is raise your paddle green if you think. Wait, wait, wait. No. Wait. How many of you have the magical paddle that is both green on both sides and red on both sides? I didn't mess up on any. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. What? Ah! He works for me. That doesn't count. <laughs> that is terrible. That is a fad. What you guys have is a trend. The right paddle. How is there just one? There should be a double-sided green okay. somewhere. So red. Yes. Oh, double-sided green. You agree with everything on the trend side. Red is for fad. Green is for trend. We're going to see what you guys think. So the first Next kind slide. of, yes, ma'am. The first kind of one we're going to talk about are maker spaces, fab labs, hack spaces, tinkering. Is that a trend, which is green? And then same time, everybody put up your red ones if, if you're you it's a fad. fad. Okay, yeah. so are we just going to All right, pick? so just, if you have a red, look, see Amanda. A red one, I'm just picking Wait. you when you're coming up here. If you have a red paddle, come up. You too. You, I'm looking. And we need two people with a green paddle. In. Two people with a green Who's paddle. The sucker with a green paddle. Come on. Oh, Look now it. you guys put all your hey. paddles down. <laughs> Look Seriously. at that. All of a sudden, it's not a thing they can do. I'm gonna have to use descriptors. Tall guy, 
right Tall there. Guy, come down. Anissa, is that green? It's okay. Just come down. I promise. All you right, can even green. put on your resume that you were on a panel at future libraries. This is, this is helping you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Endorsed by 24-hour fitness trainer, Cheryl Lee. <laughs> come up, come up, come up. Okay, so. Why don't, we, why don't we start? Are those mics live? Oh. <laughs> they are live. So we're going to go down the row. Tell us if it's your name. Very professional. Uh, trend or fad or fend and why you maybe think or so. Fad. In only like 10 seconds because we only have a 30-minute presentation. Um, trend Good. is green. Tr trend is green. Go, Anissa. Uh, because DIY has been along around for a very long time already, and we're just now embracing it, so I think it's already a trend. And I'm Anissa. <laughs> Backwards, that's fine. Um, yeah, I said trend. I'm Kevin, and I think because there's a lot of potential for growth in hacker spaces and maker spaces. So. Uh, my name is Amanda, and I guess I, I, I fell somewhere on the fence on that, but I guess I, I think that for coding, we are seeing a lot of uses of shared spaces for coding more so than anything else. It's how we've embraced it more so at our library system. So, so I think you think that's, coding is a fact? Yeah, I think coding is something that doesn't really require school or the money that people invest, and in. it's most likely a lot of future positions and jobs. So yeah, I think it'll continue. Thank you for your input. <laughs> also, because you guys did not get up, we're keeping you here the whole presentation. <laughs> your attendance at this program has allowed us to keep you hostage. Don't leave. Also, there's a camera smile. Um, <laughs> Nicole, what do you think about yeah, Maker Movement? So for me, the Maker Movement is more of a trend. Um, it's one of the main things about trends is longevity. It's been around for a really long time. The first Maker Fair was in 2006. That was 10 years ago, I know. I see lots of, oh my gosh, yes, 10 years ago. And sometimes I feel like people think that it has peaked and it's kind of coming down. But in 2014, over 250,000 people went to both the Bay Area one and the San Francisco one. And over 50% of them were actually with children. So kids are growing up with the maker movement from the time that they're you know, in preschool and younger. Um, it's also ingrained in our schools. In Morgan Hill, how many of you guys know where Morgan Hill is? Oh, thank Good you. Good job. So she feels better. I know. I do feel better. It's a, suburb, it's a suburb of San Jose, about 10, 15 miles south of San Jose. It's got a small community feel. In that small town, small town of 40,000 people, in that small town, we have one STEM school, one STEAM school, one music and math academy, and one engineering academy, and they're all public schools. So this is um, the trend. This is something that you're seeing in schools, uh, that they're learning about um, makerspaces and STEAM and all that stuff when they're really young. So that's why I think it's a trend. I think it's more of a fad only because space is at a premium. Like, I would love to have the mix at my library. The mix is the size of my library. So it's kind of hard when you work at a smaller library and you're like, I don't really have a space. Um, I think more as well that some of the things within the maker movement, like I think we are moving towards DIY, hands-on projects. I don't think patrons necessarily want to come and just listen to a lecture. I think they want to get their hands a little dirty. They want to sew something. They want to paint something. They want you to literally read their tarot cards for each individual person who comes to a program. And they want that hands-on experience, whereas sometimes I've seen patrons fall asleep in a book talk, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's a miss. Um, I also think that within the makerspace, we have a lot of fads. I think things like 3D printing was like, everyone's got to get a 3D printer. And then we have no idea how to use a 3D printer. So one sucker librarian has to learn how to use the 3D printer. You are laughing if it's you. <laughs> And so you're kind of stuck, and then when you leave, that library's kind of like, oh, what are we gonna do? Put it in the closet. Um, and then you've got like cost and like ventilation, like poisoned three people, something like that. Um, I also think about drones are really cool. Like, I'm starting a drone club. I don't think drones are gonna have, I'm starting a drone club. Oh, I'm gonna okay. give like 10 year olds a drone and see what happens. Are you providing the drones? I am providing the drones. Yeah. But it's the, it's the same kind of thing. You're catching onto something really quickly where I don't know if drones in their current form will be around in 10 years. So I think parts of what's in the maker movement, maybe coding or 3D printing, some people are really successful and some aren't because we aren't always content experts mm -hmm. on what's in our maker movement, but it's like the thing that you have to have now to be cool. Yeah. Yes. All right, what's our next one? Push the button. 
Should we make them sit down? No, they're really great. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> I'm but we so do have two sorry. more seats to fill. If somebody would like to come up, think I'll about that. App. No, we're not giving them a choice. Oh, okay. we should have got candy. Um, okay, so <laughs> our next fad versus trend is app gaming. Anybody right. here play a game on their app? Oh, come. Oh, really? that's a lie. <laughs> you are all liars. Is anybody here playing a game on their app right now? <laughs> Look at Marlene's got a screen right here. She's on an iPad playing Candy Crush. That's terrible. Um, so, do we return it? Okay, okay, so put up your paddle. Uh, red is if you think it is a fad. Green is if you think app gaming is a trend. Huh. Trying to see. There's who like three, I know. four. Hey, you in the front row. What you doing, Johnny? You want to come up? Want to come up? No, he looks scared. We what do our panelists scared. say? Get his ass up. Oh, that's why we don't have nice things. <laughs> okay, well, there's only three of you that have red. Annapurna, panels. do you want to come up? Annapurna. Oh, come on! It was red. It was red. It was red. Get up here. Shyest librarians Roslyn. ever. Okay, Roslyn. how about this? How about you three well, tell us why you think our presentation. <laughs> it is a trend. Yes. On or the spot. fad, whatever you feel like, I how you feel trend, about it. But you guys are saying it's a fad. Oh, no, we're, no, not we're, saying we're not saying anything. anything. This is uh, a discussion. This is where we ridicule you after you say yours. I think it's financially beneficial, and I think that people see that, so I think that you could make money off of it. So it's not going anywhere. Um, I think, um, yeah, it's a trend because it's games are just moving into the new medium of, uh, or the new technology, so. Yeah, I think it's a trend just because people are going to continue to generate new games and create new apps, and people have idle time and like to distract themselves with their phones, as we know, so I don't think that's changing. It's the, I'm less mad at Starbucks now when I don't get my drink. I'm like, that's fine, I got another level to go. <laughs> it's true. Um, so I kind of, I feel that the um, idea of app gaming is a trend, but the specific games are fads. Um, you know what I mean? Like I feel, you know, especially Pokemon Go, sorry, it's in my life right now. Um, there are over, I wrote down, I, there's this place where you can go on the web that tells you how many people are downloading it in real time. And in 25 seconds, what was it? Over 2,000 people had downloaded Pokemon Go. I mean, it's crazy. It's so many people that are downloading it. So that's, that's something that we can kind of catch on to. Um, I also think that they'll peak. Um, at some point, there will be something that will replace it. Um, it was popular when I was growing up, so it only took 20 more years for it to come back. Um, and, and the other thing, too, is there, you also have to talk about accessibility. It depends on your community. Um, where, I, where I live in Morgan Hill, there's a lot. You know, not everybody has a smartphone. Not everybody's into the app gaming because they don't have the actual device to do it. Um, and, but they might have their cousin's friend's brother's old PlayStation at home that got donated to them or got passed down. So in that respect, I feel that um, console gaming is something that, at least in my library, we support. How many of you guys um, check out console games at your library? Raise your hand if you check out console games. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, like, in my yeah. library, we have a, the Santa Clara County Library, we have checked out game, console games for, oh my gosh, five, six, seven years, a long time. We still have GameCube games to check out. That's how long. That's like getting a VHS. <laughs> it is. Um, so, I feel that it, it really depends on your community if you're talking about app gaming versus console gaming. Um, that's... So I think, like, I feel like the actual games are more fads, but the app gaming, more people are going to get smartphones, more apps are going to come out, more people are going to be using them. So that's more on the trend wavelength. That's what I feel. 62% uh, of smartphone owners, when they get their new iPhone 7 the first week, the number one thing they download is an app game. That's before they do their LinkedIn profile, their Facebook. They put a mobile game on their phone to distract them. Is it Pokemon Go? It's probably not Pokemon Go, it's whatever's like after Pokemon Go. Um, but here's the funny part about this. I think that app gaming is a trend for the first year. Digital app game sales, that's in-game sales, revenue that they make through marketing or in-game purchases, will outsell console gamings and PC gamings. So not together, but app games will sell more than PC games this year, and app gaming will sell more than console gaming this year. And you didn't share that with me. But 
I'm not supposed I to tell my you. Point of you view. can't change your point of view. But here's here's the good part about it. So this is where fens and trads come in because you're kind of like, should I? Should I not? Should I? And you have to make these big decisions for your library. Should I? Should I not? Do I get Blu-ray? Do I offer video games? The idea is is that video games as a whole is up. These guys aren't eating their market. This isn't VHS and DVD where one will take over the other. This is both together. Gaming as a whole is up a phenomenal percentage. Did you know, here's a fun fact, that yeah. there is, I love telling these, that there is, oh, it's not on the right shot. Wait, That's okay, well, I got you. While you're looking, I want to say something. Okay. Don't we give were talking before, I can't even read your handwriting. Good. So we were talking before I was talking to Roslyn somebody that works in my library. We were talking about how many people, not only how many people are doing gaming, but how many people are watching people do gaming. Like I didn't realize not only is there the gamers, but then there's like, what was it again? What was it, Esports. Rosalind? What's this, week? What's this weekend? Oh, the League of Legends Championship. League of Legends Championship. Like there are all these people that are watching people. Play Marlene games. is watching someone play right video now, game on her right phone. now on her <laughs> iPad. Um, more people watch esports worldwide than Americans watch sporting events, or worldwide audiences watch a sporting event. So that's how popular digital gaming is. Here's the fun fact 29% of gamers are under 18 years old, but a larger percentage of that are over 50 years old. So the gaming community is getting older and it's bringing in the younger generation. So I think that they're here to stay. There's 71 million worldwide viewers for eSports, and that's console PC gaming. So it's increasing. So maybe one of the things you have to decide is do I maybe take back, hey, I should offer video games at my library. Should I not? Is there a market for it? And recognizing trends and fads, maybe since gaming's increasing, you should think about spending a billion dollars on games. <laughs> And then, and if you don't want it, this is kind of where that low impact, mid impact, high impact thing comes in. Maybe you don't have the money to make a collection, but maybe you have some money where you can do some programming. It costs a lot less to buy some gaming supplies and do gaming programs. And that's an expense that you make one time and you can use it over and over and over again. Cool, gaming. All right, push the button. Where are we going next? Oh, we forgot this one. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. Once again, people should not really let me make the PowerPoint about the internet memes. Those are really funny. This is of no help to actually remembering the presentation. At all. Okay. All right, streaming is... Um, uh, who thinks that... <laughs> I like it. They all laugh because they get it to the conclusion at the same time, and they laugh together. Um, is streaming content, music, video, anything... A trend green or a fad red? Oh, oh. We need to, like, when we do this at CLA, look at this one. But, oh, that's trad. a trad. That's a trad. That's a trad. <laughs> there isn't a, is there a single There's red one? There's not a single red. Be that person. Be that red. It's okay. Turn it around someone. No, I'm just kidding. Gosh, golly. Um, Someone's just waving it, so I think they're frenzies. This is an area where Angela and I pretty much agree that it's trending. Um, it's tr tradding. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you, how many do you, uh, services do you stream in your personal life, Nicole? Zero. I spend $120 a month for DirecTV. I spend $14 <laughs> for a Netflix and Hulu account, and I stream free music on Pandora. And I spend the rest on video games. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the industry is growing. I and the thing with streaming is I feel like before it used to be um, not great content, but now you're getting original content, you're getting Orange is the New Black, you're getting all these things that are only available through Netflix or Amazon Prime. Just the content that is available with streaming has increased in quality. Um, what? Oh. Push the button. Yeah. No, it's that one. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Here. There you go. You got it. Um, I also think that streaming is an area... Let's be honest with ourselves, we're libraries. We suck at it. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say, but like really nicely for them. Um, <laughs> libraries aren't on the cutting edge, and maybe that's our fault of not yelling enough, but we, everyone in this room, had a green or a greeny red, right? But we all know it's an issue. It's not something we're doing very well, but that we know is a thing that has to happen. So I'm going to ask the three people on our panel. <laughs> um, I already forgot my question. 
Were you going to ask what How stream? Can, yeah. No, I wasn't going to ask that. How do you guys think that libraries can get into the streaming business? I think it's definite challenge because lots of people still have access issues to even having that kind of functionality at home. Some people can't even, you know, still turn on the computer. So I think that's going to be a real downside to it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, coming up against your administration about buying streaming services. Mm -hmm. Um, SFPL already has Hoopla, which is really popular, but I think, yeah, it's important to provide more ease of access. Um, you need an email address to sign up for a Hoopla account. Some people don't have email addresses even, so just um, making it easier for the patron. Um, Berkeley also has Hoopla, so we've followed and bought a product that's trying to compete with Netflix or Amazon Prime and stuff. Um, but I think part of it is also getting the message out to our patrons that this is even something that they are also getting with their library card. Uh, you know, your library card gets you into museums and all the things that we can tell oh, them. So a lot of things. Yeah. Here's what? No, are are you? Uh, Okay. Well, I was going to say, Hoopla, we, she, that's very nice. I have 10 minutes. I think she gave us more time. She's really nice. Um, I think the thing with Hoopla is we're trying to compete with Netflix, right? And this is a really valid point that I'm sure Nicole was trying to make before I stepped on her toes is we have IndieFlix. I don't like anything on IndieFlix. Um, Hoopla is great, but like I want to watch Zootopia, which just came out on Netflix, and I'm not using Hoopla to do that. So I have to supplement. I stream all of my digital content on my Xbox. Right now, currently, Hoopla doesn't have an app, although they're working on it. So that's the number one way I stream is either through a smart TV or through my digital device. And what the library has available doesn't make it easy for me unless I want to sit like in my bed with an iPad two inches from my face. Well, I think we have to make a dis we have to have a discussion and make a decision. Do we really need to compete with Netflix? Are we ever going to be able to compete with Netflix? Should we focus on more specialized things that we can do at Santa Clara County Library? We have something called Medici TV. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Anybody heard of that? Ooh, okay, oh, so, uh, wait, one, no, wait. One person. Well, she, oh, she probably works with the you. They're from the county. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that's really cool because you can stream live performances from orchestras and symphonies from all over the world. I see mouths dropping. We have that. Library cards are free. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? And it's only three thousand dollars. Look at them all nod. This is the most important part that they've learned so, from this entire um, thing. So I don't know if our investment should be more in those specialty things that the library can offer, things that they can't get anywhere else. And we just say, you know, Netflix. We're not going to be able to compete with seven dollars a month, or however. It's like eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. You a find month. that in the bottom. Of I mean, your we're purse. not going to be able to compete with that. We just let Netflix have their thing, and we'll have other things. And I think, and what I like about Hoopla, though, is the graphic novels and the comic books that are on Hoopla. It is a great way to stream those, which is also something that we don't necessarily have great access to. It also has a wonderful music collection. So while we think of Hoopla as maybe the Netflix for the library, I, I think you're right. We need to come into that middle ground of this is important. What other streaming services can we support so that we're something that's like an amalgam of streaming? But we all understand that streaming is... Or it's something we're going to have to use a third party like Overdrive or someone else is going to make the investment to do the streaming and then we just latch onto that. Next slide. Oh man, are we gonna have enough time for this one? I don't think what, we have time. Would we you give time. me like a seven minute, no, six and a half? Five. It's five. I haven't even reached five yet. Really. You haven't even reached five? This is actually like our QA. So here we go. Uh, red is you don't have it, green is you do have it. This is gonna be fast, rapid fire. You guys got this. Ready? Ha this is for your library system. Not personal. Not personal, you cool kids with Snapchat. <laughs> How many of your library systems have, have Snapchat? Snapchat. Green yet? Um, oh, there's a few greens. How many of you guys have Facebook? How many of you guys have Google Plus? No. Look at them all like really <laughs> quickly flip. Uh, how many of you guys have a Tumblr account? Tumblr is awesome. Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Uh, Reddit. Hmm. Instagram. Uh, Instagram. That one's the best. Uh, wait. Pinterest. Oh, that's a mixed bag. Uh, uh, LinkedIn. Certainly after today, everyone's getting a LinkedIn <laughs> with, account. With a very professional photograph. Yeah, of your library with like three Instagram filters to make it look appealing. Um, so 
the question is, and we've already asked it a bunch today, how do you evaluate the right social media for you? And everyone's like, how do I do it? What do I do? I think the answer's already kind of been said. Focus on what works for you and your community. Um, I have a Tumblr account, but I use it for my teen group. So that's cool. Adults don't have to get to it. It's this totally separate medium, and the teens run it for me. And I used to, like, I used to print flyers for people to take. Now all they do is take their phone out and take a picture. So, you know, and that's something that I just, observations I make while working the reference desk. How many of you guys still work the reference desk? You can make, so, I like to people watch. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's weird, but I'm always looking to see, you know, what they're, they're always taking pictures of flyers these days. So you can learn a lot just from looking at the kids, and it's mostly kids and teens, young adults, and what they're doing and what's cool. Well, here's a fun stack, stat, stacks of stats. Um, so when social media first came out, we're like, we can't get this because like older people won't know how to use a computer. It's gonna be terrible. They'll never get on social media. Uh, Pew Research, which is awesome. People 65 and older, social media has tripled for them. So in 2005, only 2% of people over 65 were on social media. In 2010, that went to 10%. Uh, 2016, the number is currently 35% of people on social media are older than 65. So we're now moving to that social media. It's definitely a trend. Mm -hmm. I can't ask you if it's a trend or a fad because it's a trend. You have to have social media in your library, but it's which ones do you choose? And for me, it's about staff and money. And it's about your community, about knowing what they're using to find out their information. Um, everybody's always saying Facebook is old, don't use Facebook. I, we use Facebook all the time. People are always on Facebook. Um, Facebook is still the number one social media app in the world. So if you have to pick one, but you guys all have Facebooks already, so. Yeah, um, this nice Instagram. lady gave us like a five and she's like venturing on the one. Okay, here, here, yeah, push that button, hurry, let's get to the end of this. Okay. Oh my God, this is my favorite. Uh, once again, never have me on a panel. Um, is this even going the right way, Cheryl? She's not paying attention to me. This is a, a curve, a marketing curve, a meme apocalypse curve, bell curve. So basically, your library doesn't have Facebook. You're right here. Oh my God, I got to catch them all. <laughs> your library has Facebook. All right, you're Pepe. You have a bunch of different social media and you post content on a regular basis and you have active users. You get to be cat meme. <laughs> so when you look at the meme the meme apocalypse bell, most libraries, sad to tell you, are in the middle. You who are here, you are probably over here, but your library is over here. And your goal and part of what Futures tries to do is get you to take little baby steps this way. How can I bring innovative and ideas to the other side? How can I introduce my library to them? Um, those are the innovators, the middle is the adopters, and the end are the laggers. You know your system, collection, program development, staffing, social media. How many of you guys, let's, let's see if anyone's honest in the crowd. How many of you guys are laggers? Cheryl. She raised her hand because she's nice. Okay, how many of you guys are like the adopter? You're kind of like in the middle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, be honest. If you're late and you don't have a panel, but yeah, there you go. How many of you guys are innovators? You think your library is doing amazing stuff that other people aren't doing and you're a trendsetter and rocking the world? Shouldn't have put rocking the world. Anna okay, Perna, no. Good job. <laughs> she's like, no, no, as a system, we have to agree. <laughs> no, don't put your. Don't come back. Um, so what we try and do as libraries is a lot of us for financial reasons, for staffing reasons, we're in the middle. And that's kind of where we live based on that. We don't have a cool entire story floor, thank you San Francisco Public for the mix, but maybe we have a little tiny room where we shoved a 3D printer and a librarian and we're trying to do cool stuff. So, oh, oh, look, references. I'm I was sorry, still on I went No, ahead. that's okay, no, no, we only have like 30 seconds. She's gonna get mad at me. Um, that was my thought. You ruined it. I was so poignant. Actually, Nancy, but go ahead. Darn it, right Nancy. Here, right um, okay, so it allows you to keep up with your community. Just because something is a fad does not mean it's a bad idea. Just because Pokemon Go is going to crash and burn horribly doesn't mean you shouldn't have a it cool pro. It is going it to, is going to burn. Um, just like Neko Atsume, just like Candy Crush before it. 
Yeah, see? Cat librarians. It's like a thing. Um, it connects you to pop culture. It's what people are talking about. We just spent five seconds this morning saying we're shushing librarians. This gets us and gets people thinking about libraries in different ways. That's my mantra. Think about the library in a different way. We don't just have books. We have other cool stuff going on, and how do we bring it to people? Um, the bell curve, proactive, reactive. As librarians, we want to be proactive, even if sometimes it doesn't work out, instead of being reactive and then regretting our life choices like what I had for lunch. It was tasty. It was good. It was okay. Okay, so after, now that we're almost done, Good, she's going to like get angry. Okay, I'm going to say one thing in closing. Put up your paddle green if you're going to go to your work and try a fad. Just do it. Everyone do green. <laughs> I think that's, um, that's pr pure pressure. I, it doesn't matter. We win. We win. Uh, <laughs> thank you. A round of thank applause our, for our hostages. Our I'm members. so, so sorry. If you have a paddle, everyone pass your paddle to the right. If you're on this side, pass it to the right. My super awesome friend, Andy... Uh, he's a library assistant. Man, this is hard. This way. This is like story time all over again. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We need those back. See us at CLA if you want. I'm just stepping all over. Look at all this stuff I have up wow. here. Do, do, do. It's like you own the podium.